What really changes with this uh, new iteration of the overseas chronograph and dual time is how much more robust and adventure-y, I was gonna say, it's not quite, I could do better than that. Now, the thing that struck me as we look at these pictures of the watches, and I can unveil them now because I believe the embargo is lifting today, so we are good to go. But what really changes with this uh, new iteration of the overseas chronograph and dual time is how much more robust and adventure-y, I was gonna say, it's not quite, I could do better than that, but it's, it really has a, a stealthier look with a titanium bezel. Now tell me, what are the other changes between this model and the production dual time and chronograph? Yeah, so the difference between the version that we're bringing out for Corey Richards, the Everest limited edition. So this one will only come with two straps instead of three on the interchangeable bracelet system. So we've got what we call a gray cordac, which, uh, which is a very durable fabric with a leather new back lining in orange. And then also you've got still the rubber, but that being said, it's in a different color from any of the other colors that we've done before. The other things that caught my eye looking at the new models are the dials are very different. And again, this is where mm. that sense of adventure, the sense of more of a daily wearer, because you know the first thing I thought of when I saw this new model is this, for all the people that find the overseas bezel, which is high polished to be a little, you know, concerning for, for knocking around on a daily basis. This takes care of that. Also the dial of the overseas collection, the current overseas generation is a really beautiful and, and look, this is the, the attribute everyone wants about this watch is this uh, multiple lacquered dial, giving it depth and a really nice gloss. These dials on the other hand are quite uh, textured and stippled almost you would say, is it, they're, they're sandblasted, is that right, Megan? Yes, so it's sandblasted, but this one, it's a grey-blue coloured dial. So a little bit different from the master line of the overseas Generation 3. Um, that The way that they actually do it is there's between 22 to 27 different layers of lacquer, which makes it look like it's actually moving. So again, hence the overseas range collection. <laughs> I said multiple layers because I was scared of putting a fine point, print point on it. Because We can put it multiple layers. layers. <laughs> it depends on which, you know, watchmaker's doing it. And they're all a little bit, you know, handmade pieces. So <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. a... Well, it's definitely, but, uh, and it's a, big, it's a big change to see an unlacquered. Uh, it looks, you can definitely get a sense of the texture of the dial. Uh, the other thing that really excited me about this watch is the, when we flip it over, what do we see, Megan? What do we see on that rotor? Looks so familiar. on that rotor, it's um, a little bit different to the Corey, Corey one that we gave to him for the prototype. Uh, so what it is, it's a 22 karat old oscillating weight. And then you actually have one of the pictures that uh, Corey took up on the expedition on the dial of Everest itself. Yes, and this is not just a, a picture of a mountain range. This is a very sculptured, uh, faceted. As as the watch gets moved around, you can see that almost the shadows change on the mm. on the actual relief of the mountains on the back. So it's absolutely stunning and a constant reminder of the tough journeys of this uh, of I suppose one of these overseas models. Um, and that yeah, is really the big difference here is that. Watch. It's an explorer's watch, whereas the overseas, the standard overseas generation three with its really, really beautiful lacquer dial and polished elements um, is a borderline uh, sport slash dress watch. Definitely not as slim as a, as a typical Vacheron dress watch, but it is finished to an extent and polished to an extent that it looks spectacular in, in a dress context, whereas this is definitely for a, uh, it's a different atmosphere completely, which I think is the main point to take away. Megan, is there anything we've missed talking about these two watches? Uh, I think obviously the the other really um, sporty element is is a higher contrast handset. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we've actually put orange on the dual time as the reference, and then also we've got orange on the chronograph function for the hour markers. So, we did this mostly because orange is one of the most visible colors you can actually see in the snow. And then it also makes it a little bit more different than the master line because as I'm sure you know, with the the steel black jewel time, you've got a red indicator and you know, it's 
also highly visible. However, this we thought would actually be more in reference to actually what Corey wore up on the mountain, essentially. <laughs>